folks, welcome to Shakers, yet another cooking class. We have this extraordinary rooftop dinner coming on the 31st of July, and it's all Jamaican food stuff. Now, I spent some time in Jamaica, and this is part and parcel of the things I picked up that we can talk about. I'm going to do jerk. Jerk has been around since the 1500s. 1574 is the first notation that I have been able to find while researching the origins of jerk. And it was developed by the Ottawa Indians and the Tanyos. Tanyos uh, were the primary Indian tribe, if you will, the native people that inhabited the Caribbean. The Ottawaks were primarily in Central America through South America. They came, they merged together, and the language of the Ottawa is really what the Tanyos then adopted. So the Spanish, who obviously controlled the Spanish main of the Caribbean for many years, um, were the ones to first enslave Africans to bring them from Africa to the New World and have them in Jamaica. And then at one point, the Brits came as the Brits developed their own naval history and they came to Jamaica and they disposed or, you know, kicked out many of the Spanish. The Spanish went on their way and then the African slaves were freed, but you're on an island. So they kind of went into the hills and uh, they got away from then the Brits that were there, that, at least as they could possibly get away. But the food style, going back to the Tanyos and the Ottawak, and then the African slaves, is what remained. So jerk was the process of preserving food. Because there's no refrigeration going on in the 15, 16, 17, even 1800s, and you have to preserve things, and things were going to be out for a long period of time. Uh, it's the Caribbean. It's hot. So. Fortunately for everybody in the Caribbean, fortunately for us everywhere in the world, these spices were available to them. So cinnamon, allspice, cardamom, molasses, scotch bonnet, chilies, all sorts of just really remarkable things, but really, it's the pimento, which is also known as allspice, and the scotch bonnets look like, the, uh, like a tam o shanter of a Scotsman, as he'd wear on his head, hence the scotch bonnet. But incredible flavorful, not as one-dimensional as, say, an abadero would be, about the same heat quotient, but much more flavor. So, I've uh, mixed this together. I think you might have seen another segment when I've mixed the dry spices together. I married in the liquid spices, and we have this marvelous, dense admixture, just like this. So, some of the color comes from the molasses, obviously sugar cane on Caribbean islands. Dynamic flavor profile, and you know, whomever thought to mix all these disparate herbs and spices together, frankly, was a culinary genius. So we've got this. We make this up in large batches. We're going back to the retail market. At one point, Babalu's Foods was sold internationally. And uh, thanks in many ways to this, and from here I developed the jam jerk ice cream and jam jerk tortilla chips and popcorn seasoning and any number of different things. So I've had these uh, chicken wings, just real basic chicken wings, that are marinating in the solution. And they've got about uh, 25 or 30 minutes in them, which I think is just about the right amount of time. And I'm going to take these simple pans. When we do this for the dinners, we have our grills upstairs. We also have a great china box that we can smoke things in. But down here at the restaurant, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put these into the oven and let them work. We have a marvelous Swedish brick-lined oven. And I've got both the, uh, the flats and I've got the drumette portion of the wings. I don't want to overwork the pan, so just about like that. We're not going to cover these, I'm just going to have these open. I want a little bit of the uh, crusting to take place as the uh, heavy amount of sugar that's in here, why they're in the, uh, uh, as a natural sugar product or molasses, I want that to caramelize a little bit and I want to have a dense tone. So these are going to go in the oven in just a moment. And then I'm going to work on getting some plantains going and do a real simple little Jamaican relish as well. So while our chicken is cooking in our oven, we are going to get some of the sides going. 
I like to take plantain, simple, starch, ubiquitous. Every equatorial area has its own type of plantain. There are a few different species going. But in essence, this is, if you want to think about it as a cross between a banana and a potato, you're not too far off. So they come as green, they come as yellow, they come as mottled and then as brown. Um, these I picked up fresh at the market today. I would have liked something just a little bit darker complected, a few more spots, a little easier to work with because the starch is going to work its way and convert. Some are easier to pull when they get a little browner. So a uh, simple pan. Again, I like using olive oil for most things I cook. You might prefer something else and that's just groovy. So what I do is I take the tips off and I score it three or four times just to facilitate pulling up the skin. So if you go to a, either Puerto Rico or a Puerto Rican restaurant, you might find tostones, which is plantains that are cooked, mashed, and then cooked again. And um, I just prefer them like this. So we're not doing thin chips. We're doing thin slices and they're going to have, just they're going to caramelize a little bit as the sugar in here, the starch is going to, uh, to cook, but they have great flavors. And I think there's just so much depth that goes on with this. Simple little bit of oil, any kind of oil you like, touch of salt and pepper, and then some lime juice. And that's what I'm looking for. So we're starting hot right now. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, let them cook away. And, uh, and there we are. So. Again, if you do this just the way I did, the peel's gonna come off in one piece. So you cut the tips, you score the sides, and you just peel this right down. Salt and pepper. Simple lime. Roll your lime first. Get as much juice out of this as you can. Use half a lime to start with. We'll wait till these are just about done with our turn. We'll put a little more on there as well. Now the next thing I want to do is this goes down in temperature. Next thing is I'm going to take this cucumber, average cucumber. I want to leave the skin on as well because every time I've had it in the islands, the skin is on. Um, there might be some parts of the old British colonialism that you might find in the Bahamas or Bermuda where they're going to take the skin off. I happen to like it on. I'm going to leave the seeds in as well. Again, this is the way I have it when I'm there. So this really could not be an easier dish to make. We're just taking the cuke, about quarter inch pieces. something just like this. Small mixing bowl. Another lime. Now I got watermelon. So I just harvested this beautiful watermelon. This is the season here in Milwaukee. Um, clearly the watermelon is not from Wisconsin, but it is from Texas and they are marvelous. Seeds in, seeds out, doesn't bother me. Primarily in Jamaica, you get seeds in. Uh, some people watching this might have more delicate constitution, not want the seeds, so it's very easy to either get a melon that has no seeds in it or to take one which has superior flavor with seeds and pull the seeds out. All we're gonna do with this is just a coarse chop and marry the watermelon in with our cucumber.
I've got some poblano chilies here. I'm going to take a little bit of poblano. Just finely cut as well. So you have different textures and different sizes going on here, but real basic. Just because I like it myself, uh, if we had a yellow onion, we would get a small amount of that in here. I think that uh, whites and reds are too sharp for this dish, but I do think that yellows are wonderful. They're sweet and they add just so much. You wanna use scallions, that's perfectly fine as well, again. Any of the cooking classes that we do at Shakers are just grab it and go and uh, use what you have available. And it's kind of the, uh, the old Julia Child concept, don't apologize for doing something that other people don't do or don't have the inclination or the ability to do. Just get in there and do it. And that could mean you have different products to work with on a daily basis, but that's okay. So here we are, just a real simple, cool and refreshing garnish that's going to go along with this jerk chicken wing and of course with the plantain and that's going to set up for a moment and we're back to these to see what we have working here so because we turned the temperature down we have this real nice little golden brown complexion taking place and that's pretty much what you're looking for i'm going to keep them warm until our jerk chicken is ready to go point maybe just a touch more oil as they're absorbing a little bit and there we are in a minute we'll be back to pull the chicken out of the oven and uh, taste the delight if you can smell it right now it smells so good in here cheers we're back it's about 20 minutes or so since we put our jamager chicken wing into the brick oven check our temperature first We are at 165 degrees, exactly what we're looking for. It's always a good idea to uh, use a probe on your chicken to make sure you've got the right temperature. Gonna lay down a little bit of our mango puree. We use this for all sorts of things, the shakers, just ubiquitous. We take fresh mango, we process them down, and we get this lovely puree. There are some commercially available products you can use as well that are quite nice, but uh, anytime you have the opportunity to use fresh, I think you should. Plantains, you see how they cook very nicely. We've held them as well. So this will be our starch component. Arrange these any way you like. This will be the way you get this dish at Shakers. So Jamaican plantain, not the tostones that you would with a Puerto Rican style. The chicken wings. When we do these for the outdoor gigs, we uh, grill them and they're going to be just a touch drier than our baked method here. So here we have our chicken wing. Here we have our plantain with the mango base at the bottom. And this is that lovely little salad that we made before. It's kind of like a chutney, but it's just fresh cucumbers, some lime juice, a little bit of mango squished in here, and of course the watermelon. In my mind, it just doesn't get much better than this. This truly is the taste of the islands. I hope you had the opportunity to go and experience part of Jamaica, but in the meantime, come see us at Shakers or get a bottle of the Jam and Jerk Marinade. Cheers. <laughs>